I really can't criticize anybody in the entertainment field. It's very hard to live up to an image. Elvis Presley, the legendary king of rock and roll, renowned for timeless hits like Jailhouse Rock and Love Me Tender, tragically passed away at a young age, leaving fans worldwide in mourning. Now, nearly 50 years later, Shockwaves are rippling through the world once again as news emerges that Elvis's tomb has just been opened. Why do you think you've outlasted every other entertainer? I take vitamin E. I'm only totally kidding. I embarrass myself, man. I, I don't know, dear. I enjoy the business. I like what I'm doing. The revelation of what lies within is nothing short of astonishing. But why would Elvis Presley's grave be opened? And what secrets do investigators hope to uncover? Join us as we delve into this unprecedented event and uncover the truth, lies, and secrets that have been hidden for these years. Let's get started. Before we delve into the opening of Elvis Presley's grave and what was found, it is crucial we learn of his early life and how he became the legend we all celebrated. Early Life of Elvis Presley Born on January 8, 1935 in Tupelo, Mississippi, Elvis Aaron Presley emerged as the second of twin boys. Tragically, his brother Jesse was stillborn, leaving Elvis to grow up as an only child. Despite financial struggles, his parents worked hard to provide a modest upbringing filled with love and music. Elvis's early exposure to music came from the vibrant gospel tunes of the church, deeply influencing his distinctive musical style. Recognized for his voice at an early age, Elvis's talent shone through when he won a talent show at just 10 years old. Moving to Memphis with hopes of better opportunities, Elvis immersed himself in the city's rich music scene, particularly on Beale Street. His journey to stardom began when his mother gifted him his first guitar on his 11th birthday, igniting a passion that would shape his future. Attending Elsie Humes High School, Elvis stood out with his unique style and love for music, though he faced bullying for his differences. Undeterred, he continued to refine his skills, participating in talent shows and absorbing musical knowledge at every opportunity. In high school, Elvis's talent really began to shine. He wowed the crowd at the annual minstrel show with his performance of Till I Waltz Again With You, leaving everyone in awe. It was obvious that Elvis had a natural gift and his confidence only grew with each performance. After graduating in 1953, Elvis took on different jobs but never let go of his musical dreams. So how did he rise to fame? What led to his sudden death? And what recent news has been revealed? Well, keep watching to know. Rise to fame and acting career. Starting from humble beginnings in Tupelo, his journey to fame kicked off with groundbreaking recordings at Sun Records. His music blended blues, country, and gospel, captivating listeners and paving the way for a new genre, rock and roll. With his magnetic stage presence and unique voice, Elvis became an icon of music and a hero to millions. He dominated the music charts like no other, with an astounding 149 songs making it to the Billboard Hot 100. His singles spent a combined 80 weeks at the top spot, and he sold over 1 billion records worldwide, cementing his status as the best-selling solo artist ever. Elvis didn't just conquer the music world. He also found success on the big screen, starring in 31 hit films that were box office hits. He wasn't just a music sensation, he was a true movie star. His TV specials, including The 68 Comeback, are still remembered as some of the most beloved shows of their time. Elvis achieved great success in his career, winning three Grammy Awards and receiving the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award at just 36 years old. He was also honored with inductions into various music halls of fame, spanning genres like pop, country, rockabilly, rhythm and blues, adult contemporary and gospel. Despite rarely performing outside the United States, his records and films gained immense popularity worldwide. He became a global cultural icon, known and admired by his first name alone. Throughout his career, Elvis broke barriers and set records that continue to be recognized today. Battle with drugs and deteriorating career. Elvis's long-standing dependency on prescription medication was well known among those close to him. He had been grappling with addiction for years, often turning to his personal physician, known as Dr. Nick, to fulfill his cravings. 
Dr. Nick had been prescribing a concerning assortment of medications, such as Quaaludes and Demerol, among others. In the period leading up to his passing, Elvis's health had been in rapid decline. He had experienced significant weight gain, and his stage performances became increasingly erratic. Frequently, he appeared disoriented, forgetting lyrics and struggling to maintain pace with the music. Despite these challenges, his performances in Las Vegas and on concert tours became legendary, often setting new attendance records. His unique blend of raw energy and emotional expression became the benchmark for live performances, unmatched by his peers. Colonel Tom Parker, his manager, had become increasingly worried about Elvis's well-being but felt incapable of intervening. One significant incident occurred during his iconic 1973 Aloha from Hawaii concert when lyric cards for Burning Love were displayed for him. Although some fans claimed he barely glanced at them, the mere presence of the cards served as a safety net, which he hadn't required previously. They argued that this wasn't due to substance abuse, as often speculated, but rather a quirk Elvis had dealt with throughout his career. They cited the 68 comeback special, where he struggled to recall lyrics to his own songs, highlighting it as a long-standing challenge for him. Yet, when he forgot lyrics, he often infused humor and interacted with the audience, turning potential mishaps into endearing moments. Similarly, in 1970, during a live show in Vegas, he relied on sheet music to keep up with several songs, displaying moments of authenticity and relatability fondly remembered by fans. Tragic death and circumstances surrounding his death tragedy struck on August 16, 1977, when Elvis passed away at the age of 42. On the day of his passing, Elvis had been awake all night unable to sleep and had taken multiple doses of prescribed medications. Around 2.30 a.m., he retreated to the bathroom where he typically spent time reading. Several hours later, his fiancée, Ginger, discovered him unconscious on the floor. Elvis was discovered unresponsive in the bathroom of his Graceland mansion in Memphis, Tennessee. Despite immediate efforts to save him, Elvis was pronounced dead at 3.30 p.m. The official cause of death was listed as a heart attack, but the autopsy report revealed a more complex situation. Examined by Dr. Jerry Francisco, the Shelby County Medical Examiner, it was discovered that Elvis had an unusually enlarged heart, weighing nearly double the normal size. This condition, termed hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, likely played a role in his sudden cardiac arrest. Additionally, toxicology reports revealed the presence of various prescription drugs in his system, including high doses of opiates, barbiturates, and sedatives. The news of his death shocked the world, leaving fans in disbelief and sorrow. The circumstances surrounding his untimely demise have sparked speculation and intrigue over the years. Fans' response to his death and controversies around Elvis's prescriptions. From Dr. Nick, the news of Elvis's passing sent shockwaves throughout the industry and beyond. Fans worldwide mourned, holding candlelight vigils and leaving flowers at Graceland's gates. The media frenzy ensued, with reporters and photographers flocking to Memphis to cover the story. In the aftermath, questions emerged about the circumstances of his demise. Many fans couldn't accept the idea of their idol succumbing to a mundane heart attack, leading to rumors of foul play or a cover-up. In the years that followed, those closest to Elvis came forward to illuminate his final days. Friends and family painted a picture of a deeply troubled man, battling addiction, depression, and the pressures of fame. After Elvis's passing, his doctor faced a series of tumultuous events. Legal scrutiny mounted over his prescription practices, culminating in a 1980 indictment on 14 counts of overprescribing drugs, not only to Elvis, but to other high-profile figures like Jerry Lee Lewis. Despite being acquitted, further repercussions followed. The Tennessee Medical Board permanently revoked his medical license, citing concerns about his judgment and ethics due to years of overprescribing medication to patients. Dr. Nick experienced a bizarre and frightening incident in 1979 when he was shot in the chest while watching a football game. Fortunately, he escaped serious injury, 
but the incident remained shrouded in mystery as no suspect was ever apprehended. Speculation arose that the shooting might have been the work of an angry Elvis fan. Elvis's Funeral Service and Burial Elvis's burial was a grand and emotional affair, fitting for the king of rock and roll. He was laid to rest at the Meditation Garden at Graceland, his iconic mansion in Memphis, Tennessee. This serene and beautiful garden was a place Elvis frequented for reflection and solace. The burial ceremony occurred on August 18, 1977, just two days after his untimely death. While private, it was attended by family, close friends, and a select few from the industry. Despite its private nature, thousands of devoted fans gathered outside the gates to pay their respects to their beloved music icon. The meditation garden was adorned with floral arrangements, including a stunning array of red roses, Elvis's favorite flower. A magnificent fountain served as a backdrop for the somber occasion. Elvis's casket, crafted from solid copper and lined with velvet, was the centerpiece of a moving tribute filled with heartfelt eulogies and musical performances. Officiated by Reverend C.W. Bradley, who had married Elvis and Priscilla, the ceremony saw family members and close friends sharing memories and expressing love for the fallen star. Gospel singers, including J.D. Sumner and the Stamps Quartet, performed favorite hymns, their voices blending hope and celebration amidst sorrow. As the ceremony concluded, Elvis's casket was lowered into the ground, marking his final resting place. Today, Graceland visitors honor Elvis at the Meditation Garden, where he rests alongside his parents, Vernon and Gladys, and his grandmother, Minnie Mae. Posthumous career. Several of his posthumously released singles became top 10 country hits between 1977 and 1981, demonstrating his enduring popularity. Graceland, his iconic home, was open to the public in 1982, attracting over half a million visitors annually and earning recognition as the second most visited home in the United States. In 2006, Graceland was designated as a National Historic Landmark, further solidifying Elvis's cultural significance. His contributions to music were celebrated with inductions into five prestigious music halls of fame, alongside receiving notable awards such as the W.C. Handy Award and the American Music Awards Award of Merit. Elvis's influence extended beyond his original recordings, with remixes like A Little Less Conversation, gaining international success, and marking his return to the top of the charts after nearly three decades. Subsequent years witnessed the resurgence of his classic tracks, including remixes of Rubberneckin' and the re-release of That's Alright. Presley's commercial success also continued posthumously, with Forbes magazine consistently recognizing him as the top-earning deceased celebrity. In 2018, RCA Legacy released a new album focusing on Elvis's love for gospel music, while Baz Luhrmann's biographical film Elvis hit theaters in 2022, garnering critical acclaim and commercial success. The portrayal of Elvis Presley by Austin Butler earned accolades, including a Golden Globe win. Additionally, in January 2023, Presley's personal jet fetched a significant sum at auction, further highlighting the enduring fascination with the king of rock and roll. Rumors of Elvis's grave being opened and speculations that he might have faked his death. Speculation abounds with whispers, suggesting that the tomb of the legendary Elvis Presley might undergo opening, igniting excitement among fans and theorists. The rumor's origin remains as enigmatic as the king himself, taking on a life of its own. It all began on online forums where discussions surfaced about Elvis's family potentially revealing secrets about his final resting place. The notion of glimpsing into the private life of such a public figure stirred anticipation within the Elvis-loving community. While it's unclear who initially broached the idea of opening the tomb, once it emerged, it spread rapidly across forums and online Elvis communities like wildfire. But what fuels such rumors? Some argue that Elvis may have faked his death. Supporters cite various evidence, including peculiarities surrounding his tombstone, such as the misspelling of his middle name, Aaron. Others point to a supposed sighting of Elvis in the background of an airport scene 
in the 1990 film Home Alone. In the bustling airport scene, Catherine O'Hara's character is seen negotiating frantically for a flight home. Positioned behind her is a bearded gentleman dressed in a turtleneck and sports coat, sparking speculation and intrigue. Standing just over O'Hara's left shoulder, his features strongly resemble what many imagine an older Elvis to look like. From his eyes to the contour of his face and even his posture, there's a familiarity reminiscent of the iconic rock and roll legend. Of particular interest is the gentleman's beard, thick, well-groomed, and covering much of his lower face, potentially serving as a disguise. While it deviates from Elvis's usual clean-cut appearance, it adds an element of mystery. Is it a deliberate attempt to blend in or simply a fashion choice for a background extra? Furthermore, his body language speaks volumes, an air of impatience and discontent subtly expressed, adding depth to the scene and fueling speculation. His demeanor mirrors that of a former star now relegated to the background, observing rather than participating. Noteworthy, too, is his attire, the timeless sports coat and turtleneck reminiscent of Elvis's own style. These subtle details contribute to the theory's intrigue. Additionally, handwriting analysis has played a role in fueling rumors of Elvis's faked death. Experts point to discrepancies in his posthumous signatures compared to earlier ones, suggesting the possibility of someone else signing on his behalf to maintain the illusion of his passing. The circumstances surrounding Elvis's funeral have raised questions among believers. Despite his status as a beloved public figure, the funeral was surprisingly small and kept private. Adding to the intrigue, his body was laid to rest in a 900 pounds copper coffin, a weight some argue could be excessive unless the coffin was empty. Moreover, the speed of the funeral proceedings following his death announcement has fueled skepticism. Some wonder if the swift arrangements were intended to avoid scrutiny. Over time, numerous individuals have claimed to have seen Elvis alive long before his reported death. These sightings have become a cultural phenomenon, with people worldwide reporting encounters with the iconic figure. The first of these sightings occurred just a day after his death. A man resembling Elvis purportedly bought a one-way ticket to Buenos Aires under the name John Burrow an alias associated with Elvis. This event sparked widespread speculation and subsequent sightings, each adding to the mystery. In late 1977, a photograph surfaced, allegedly capturing Elvis lounging in his pool house at Graceland. The debate over the figure's identity persists, with some adamant that it depicts Elvis himself. In the 1980s, Kalamazoo, Michigan became a hub for Elvis enthusiasts, with numerous sightings reported. Residents claimed to have seen Elvis alive and well, carrying on as if he had never left the spotlight. Adding to the intrigue was a mysterious phone call in 1988, where a voice resembling Elvis's declared his readiness for a comeback, igniting further speculation about his fate. The sightings didn't stop there. They even extended to the realm of music. In 1988, an anonymous artist released a song titled Spelling on the Stone, sparking beliefs that Elvis was singing from beyond the grave or from a hidden location. At the turn of the millennium, Elvis was reportedly seen at the grand opening of Legoland in California, though it was later revealed that impersonators were present. Meanwhile, Devoted Elvis fans kept the excitement alive with articles in the Weekly World News tabloid, detailing supposed post-1977 adventures. They portrayed Elvis as a globetrotter who had faked his death to live anonymously. Some believed Elvis embedded cryptic messages in his music, citing songs like I'll Never Know and Way Down as potential clues. The cover of his album Promised Land, featuring Elvis in a white suit, was interpreted as a symbolic representation of his spiritual journey. Some peculiarities surrounding Elvis's death have been noted. His body was discovered in an unusual position, with his pajama bottoms around his ankles. Some speculated that the autopsy report had been altered, or that the toxicology results had been withheld. Why Elvis might have faked his own death? Elvis led a life as vibrant as the stage costumes he favored. Just imagine the exhilaration of stepping into the spotlight, 
defying a world that scrutinized his every move. Faking his death might have been seen as a bold escape, offering a chance to start anew, away from the pressures of fame and constant public attention. The allure of complete privacy, particularly for someone like Elvis Presley, constantly under the public eye, could have been appealing. It might have offered the simple joys of anonymity, free from paparazzi and tabloid headlines, Financial freedom could also have been a factor. Elvis may have grown tired of the financial demands and the need to maintain an extravagant lifestyle, seeking relief from the burdens and expectations of stardom. Then there's the potential for a dramatic comeback. The music industry loves a resurrection story and Elvis returning from the dead would certainly be sensational. It could have been the ultimate career move, shaking the entertainment world to its core. The weight of his legacy could have prompted him to safeguard it from the effects of aging and changing musical tastes. By dying, he could have ensured that his legend remained untarnished, forever youthful and vibrant in the hearts of his fans. Another perspective to consider is the universal desire for control. In a life where Elvis had little say over his privacy, public image and often his personal choices, Faking his death might have represented the ultimate assertion of control. It would have been a decision entirely his own, a closely guarded secret, and a final act on his own terms. Elvis Presley Legacy Arguably, one of Elvis Presley's most enduring legacies is the fervent following he amassed after his passing. His fans elevate celebrity admiration to extraordinary levels, viewing him not just as a music icon but as a way of life. Their devotion extends beyond mere enjoyment of his music. It's a full-fledged lifestyle for many. From visits to Graceland to participating in tribute competitions, their activities mirror the vibrancy of Elvis's own stage attire. A particularly charming and distinctive aspect is the phenomenon of Elvis tribute artists. Around the world, enthusiasts don elaborate jumpsuits and meticulously groom their hair to embody their idol. Competitions judge participants not only on vocal accuracy, but also on their ability to embody Elvis's charm and stage presence. The level of commitment to authenticity is remarkable, with some even studying his mannerisms and speech patterns. Then there's Elvis Week, an annual event held at Graceland, once the residence of the legendary musician and now transformed into a museum. Fans from across the globe converge in Memphis to honor his life, partaking in candlelight vigils, crafting intricate fan art, and swapping rare memorabilia. It's a week-long celebration dedicated entirely to everything Elvis, brimming with music, storytelling, and a strong sense of camaraderie. For some enthusiasts, their devotion transcends the ordinary, resembling something similar to the Church of Elvis. They view him as a messianic figure, imbuing him with quasi-religious significance. These gatherings often intertwine traditional religious rituals with the singing of his songs, symbolizing love and unity. The Elvis-themed weddings in Las Vegas offer a peculiar yet beloved aspect of his cultural legacy. Couples can opt for an Elvis impersonator to officiate their ceremony, serenading them with can't help falling in love as they exchange vows. It's a whimsical blend of kitsch and sentimentality that has become an integral part of the Vegas wedding tradition. In the digital sphere, fans have established virtual communities where they share rare concert footage, discuss his profound influence on their lives, and even engage in role-playing scenarios as Elvis. Collecting memorabilia is another widespread pursuit, with some enthusiasts dedicating entire rooms or homes to showcase their collections. From vinyl records and concert posters to personal belongings once owned by the icon, the quest for these artifacts is relentless, with rare items being highly sought after among collectors. The tradition of Elvis fan tattoos serves as a permanent homage to the king of rock and roll. Enthusiasts adorn their bodies with his likeness, song lyrics, or even his signature, proudly displaying their dedication. Tattoo designs vary from subtle to elaborate, with some fans covering significant portions of their bodies in tribute. A quirky trend within the fandom is the Elvis look-alike pets phenomenon. Some enthusiasts dress up their pets, particularly hound dogs, in miniature Elvis costumes complete with tiny wigs and sunglasses. 
These furry companions often make appearances at fan gatherings and parades, spreading joy wherever they go. Further details in the memoir, Elvis Presley, Destined to Die Young by Sally A. Hodel. In 2020, Hodel published Elvis Destined to Die Young, a book delving into the late icon's health history and the factors contributing to his early death. For this project, Hodel interviewed individuals who knew and befriended Presley, and she had access to previously unseen documents, enriching her research. Hodel's commitment to unraveling Presley's health mysteries took her to various events commemorating his death in Memphis. She also journeyed to the United Kingdom for the Strictly Elvis Festival from September 10th to 17, 2022. These experiences provided crucial insights and context for her investigation into Presley's health and the circumstances surrounding his death. Ultimately, Hodel's book sheds light on the intricate factors that contributed to Presley's untimely passing, offering a deeper understanding of the legendary musician's life and legacy. In her book, Hodel recounted Presley confiding in backing vocalist Kathy Westmerland about his persistent eye pain and other ailments. He often requested her to massage his legs as the pain became unbearable. Moreover, he frequently expressed experiencing generalized pain throughout his body. Presley's physician, George Nicopolis, known as Dr. Nick, disclosed that Presley grappled with chronic pain stemming from degenerative issues in his back and neck caused by severe arthritis. Presley's hairstylist, Larry Geller, revealed that Presley was cognizant of his serious health issues beyond those related to his colon, liver, and medication. Hodel noted that Presley relied on medication not only for pain relief, but also to function, particularly during challenging tours. The demanding nature of touring led Presley to consume more medication while on the road, exacerbating the strain on his body. Hodel emphasized the historical backdrop of Elvis's situation, underscoring that the addictive nature of medications wasn't fully grasped in 1956. However, by the 1970s, Presley grappled with insomnia, necessitating substantial doses of medication for sleep. Turning to sleeping pills like Valium became essential when other remedies failed to provide relief. In contrast, Hodel highlighted that despite Presley's deteriorating health, his determination to continue touring persisted. She noted his remarkable work ethic, exemplified by his performance of two acts daily for 30 consecutive days in Vegas, totaling 60 shows. However, his immune system faltered, manifesting in frequent fevers and flu-like symptoms, prompting skepticism from some regarding his motives for seeking medication. Nonetheless, evidence consistently indicates his struggle with battling infections. At a certain point, his doctor attempted to gauge his ability to sleep without medication, but Presley had been awake for three days, necessitating medication just to induce sleep. Presley had intended to embark on a fourth tour on May 20th of the year he passed away. Concerns arose among those familiar with him regarding the extent of his physical suffering and stress in maintaining a rigorous schedule. During the second concert of this prospective tour, Presley was partially conscious when his head was dunked into a pail of cold water, as recounted in the book. Colonel Tom Parker, Elvis's manager, purportedly emphasized that the crucial thing was Elvis's presence on stage each night. Hodel noted Presley's apprehension about his declining health, indicating his acute awareness of his illness in his final years. Despite this, he wasn't forthcoming with everyone about his health struggles, surrounded by a circle of yes people. This era was marked by a lack of open discussion about health compared to today. Being in control of his entire business, Elvis avoided scrutiny exerting great effort to conceal his health issues and disclosing the truth to only a select few. Elvis's health deteriorated significantly, reaching a weight of 25 stone after prolonged confinement to his bedroom, indulging in junk food. His condition worsened to the extent that he needed a full-time nurse and developed sores from neglecting personal hygiene throughout 1975. Chronic constipation stemming from his unhealthy diet was revealed in a post-mortem examination, 
with a four-month-old compacted stool found in his gut. Additionally, Elvis was reliant on a combination of medications with almost 9,000 pills, vials, and injections prescribed in the seven months preceding his death. Ginger said in her biography of his death that his arms lay on the ground, close to his sides, palms facing upward. Elvis had been motionless since the time he fell on the floor. She then softly turned his face towards her, and a hint of air expelled from his nose. His tongue was squeezed between his teeth and he had a blotchy face. She lifted one eyelid slightly. His blood-red eye was looking straight ahead. An autopsy was promptly performed, but the results were kept secret by the family, creating a flurry of speculation about what killed him. Dan Warlick, lead investigator for the Tennessee Office of the State Lead Medical Examiner, attended the autopsy and added credence to the widely held belief that Elvis died while straining to use the restroom. Elvis's chronic constipation was the result of years of prescription substance abuse and high-fat, high-cholesterol gorging, triggered what's known as Valsalva's maneuver, he once stated. Simply said, the pressure of trying to defecate squeezed the singer's abdominal aorta, causing his heart to stop. Others said he died of a substance overdose, However, Coroner Joseph Davis disagreed when the probe was reopened in 1994. The position of Elvis Presley's body was such that he was about to sit down on the toilet when the seizure occurred, he added. He landed on the carpet, his behind in the air, and was dead by the time he touched the ground. If it had been a substance overdose, Elvis would have lapsed into a deep sleep. He would have crept to the door in his pajamas to seek assistance, it takes hours to die as a result of substances. What do you think of Elvis Presley's autopsy results? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you found it interesting. To know about your favorite celebrities, tap on the link that pops up on your screen. See you there.